Get ready for the Magic Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. That's right. Welcome in to another edition of the Magic Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. Talking District 4 activities week in, week out in the great state of Idaho. My name is Brandon Bainey. We are joined today by Confucius Scott Burton. Confucius say is what? Confucius say it's cold out in the garage because we are getting dumped on with snow right now. So I have moved into the fire on this yeah. lovely Friday snowy morning. Uh, you know, I was going to say the stockings were hung by the chimney with care, but you, uh, you're you not on top of that yet, Scott. Oh, no, but I do have a tree. I'll show you that. Oh, I do wow. have a tree. Yeah, so there, there are decorations abound in fact over my shoulder here i've got a gnome a christmas gnome so i see that now so we we did this uh this weekend too we set up our christmas tree and got all the decorations up scott you've got kids do you do the elf on a shelf with your um i you know what i do um when they are with me um i get them this weekend i'm obviously a divorced dad uh with little girls and so when i have them uh we have a blast. It's, uh, it's not, I, I tend to push the envelope with the elf sometimes. Uh, matter of fact, I had, we had these reindeer that are kind of decorative little reindeer, uh, in the kitchen. And sometimes I just put them places, you know, <laughs> and in interesting situations that people walk in and look at and go, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> I tend to do that with the elf on the shelf sometimes too. So it's, uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun. I, matter of fact, that might be more for me than for the kids, but dang it. I really, I really do enjoy it. Yeah. And so I don't know if you saw this Scott, but this year, um, because this guy's never not going to be an entrepreneur, but Snoop Dogg came out with, uh, not the elf on the shelf, but the Snoop on the stoop. Have you seen oh, this? It's a little, it's a little Snoop Dogg, uh, like a mini elf or whatever. That oh, seems I, more your speed, Scott. I, I, it does, and that's totally my my era, my genre. Only a little <laughs> little Snoop Dogg, you know, drop it while it's hot. But you know, you you're seeing a lot of these memes come out now with playing, uh, you know, on that elf on the shelf, right? Most of them you can't say on air, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, they're pretty dang funny. Yeah. Oh, that is, that's hilarious. So, uh, yeah, we're getting holiday Scott today, uh, AKA Confucius. I assume that's going to tie into Scott's thoughts or. Yeah, it's, it's that. And, and, uh, I was sitting, like I said, I was sitting out there freezing and I'm like, you know what? This sucks. Confucius would move inside. <laughs> Confucius say, what would Confucius do? He would go inside by the fire. And so he did. And then plus okay. it's been, it's been a hot minute since, uh, we've done any Scott's thoughts. So, um, like, all right, let's just kind of get back into it. Yes, for sure. So yeah, the last time we were on doing an episode of the magic Valley prep cast, it was right before Thanksgiving. You were super busy. Uh, you had a couple of presentations in your, in your day job that you had to, uh, attend to. Um, I had, uh, and we still have a lot of stuff going on that I'll get to in just a second here. Um, so yeah, it's been a while since we've actually done the prep cast as well, Scott. So it's good yeah. to be back in the saddle and and doing it so uh on the site idahosports.com we're kind of straddling two lines here right fall sports winter sports we've been doing this tango i personally have been doing this tango for like it feels like a month now but mm -hmm. on the site at idahosports.com we're giving one last look back to the fall sports season uh we are publishing all of the all conference teams from around the state in boys and girls soccer volleyball and football. We've already got the the soccer and volleyball pages up and running, and I'd say probably eighty percent of the conferences around the state do an all conference team. And if if they've got it reported to us, we've got it on the site. Football, I'm still working on. I'm just about finished. By the time you're listening to this or watching this, all the football all conference teams should be up there as well. District four does a really good job of of. Uh, doing these all conference teams because Scott, it really is on the coaches to get together and do this, you know, district five, where I used to live, hardly anybody does these. So it, it yeah. is nice to see the district four coaches get together to recognize these athletes. Yeah, it is. And I love our district four. I mean, they are, 
um, they're, I mean, they're tied in with us too. I mean, they are Idaho sports people and, and uh, they know who we are and, and know how important uh, it is to get that information in. And they also understand that, you know, it, it's where everybody goes to get that information and, and you know, the kids deserve it. And I think there's a lot of, you know, places around that, you know, sometimes the coaches are a little, I don't know, lackadaisical or not cooperative or whatever the case is, but that's just hurting the kids. I mean, these kids want to be out there. They want to have their scores published, their schedules out there. They want to have all this information so people can follow them, you know, and they deserve that. Yeah. So, I mean, I emailed all of the coaches from the leagues that where we didn't have any info and a couple of them wrote back one, one soccer coach even told me like, Hey, sadly, I tried to get our coaches together so we could do this and nobody really seemed interested in it. So, and that's just a bummer to hear that, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. So if you see it, if you see a league that's missing and you know that it's a league that has had an all conference team, yeah, send me that info, Brandon at IdahoSports.com. We don't want to omit anything. We want to recognize all of these outstanding young men and women. So the all-conference teams uh, on the homepage at IdahoSports.com. And then we go into winter sports. Scott, we did our girls' basketball statewide previews uh, two weeks ago. Those are still up on the site if you want to check that out. Our first girls' basketball coaches poll of the year came out earlier this week. We're working on now our boys basketball statewide previews. This is really like the opening week of boys basketball action through the weekend. We'll be working on those previews. And by Monday or Tuesday next week, all of our boys basketball previews should be up on the site ready to go. And then you might be asking, well, what about wrestling? Wrestling coverage is also ramping up at IdahoSports.com. Al Fontes, who's a great wrestling uh really a contributor. I mean, he writes articles. He does so much to champion the sport of wrestling here in the state of Idaho. He is working on a very comprehensive, very wide ranging statewide wrestling preview. It takes him a long time to put it together. So in two weeks, we will have that on the site. So like the week of December 11th, we will have that on idahosports.com. But in the meantime, Scott, for all those wrestling fans, and I know uh, Anne in your office is a big wrestling diehard. She's been asking me. We can confirm the rumor, Scott. The Matt Chat Prep Cast is coming back for season two, baby. We will start it next Tuesday, December 5th. We'll go live every Tuesday night on the idahosports.com YouTube channel and Facebook page at 8 o'clock Mountain Time seven o'clock Pacific time. And we'll be there to take everyone's questions and talk about the biggest wrestling stories. So I'm excited to get that up and running again. Oh, geez. Life in my office just got a little easier. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny because I walk in uh, in the morning and always gets there before I do. And um, she's always got one of our podcasts on, you know, whether it's, you know, the, the Matt cast or our prep cast or whatever, she's always listening. And I walk by her computer and got two screens. One of them's got Idaho sports on it. So, uh, that is so cool to see. Um, but yeah, having the Matt, the, the Matt cast back is going to make things so much nicer in that office. I'm not sure how much work we're going to get done, but it's going to be a very happy, happy environment. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So, yes, lots of good content at Idaho Sports. .com. And then, of course, uh, scores and schedules also. Uh, you know, we don't we don't have them all. We're, we're missing a score or two out there that are outstanding, but we've got 95 percent of them in. And you're just not going to find that anywhere else online. Yeah. You're just not. So I would check back every day really every afternoon because it takes me a while in the morning to track down all the missing scores. But uh, mm -hmm. really it's the time of year, Scott, where you should be at idahosports.com every day because there's always going to be something new. So Yeah, right. And uh, boy, I tell you what, and I, I told Paul in five years when I retire from my day job, I can come help you out a little bit more so you don't have to do all this by <laughs> yourself because uh, it is a lot to take on. So, uh, yes, uh, it is keep, for sure. Keep fighting a good fight because you're doing a great job and just hang in there. I'll, I'll, I'll come save you in a, in, a, in a little while. Yeah, Scott's coming with the lifeboat, so <laughs> we're, we're ready, no doubt. Okay, Scott, so we've both been very busy. We talked about, so I just regurgitated all the things going on at IdahoSports.com, but also uh, in your day job as the athletic director at Jerome High School. You've been very busy. We talked about you had a couple of presentations for work you had to do, and then you also scheduled like one of the most important girls basketball games of the season right before the Thanksgiving break, you dummy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it, it was it was last, what, Tuesday, right? Uh, yeah. Yep, okay. Last Tuesday. 
twin uh, fall comes to Jerome for a great base in conference girls basketball showdown. These were the teams picked one and two in our preseason coaches poll, Scott, and mm-hmm. it to be a pretty exciting game. Twin Falls comes in and gets a 54 to 51 victory. I can't wait for the rematch. Yeah, you know what? And and that first game is just one of those litmus, te- litmus tests uh, to see where you fall, you know? Um, because by the time these two teams play again, they are going to be completely different. You know, Twin is a really, a really good team. Um, they've got a lot of weapons back. They've got a lot of kids that can shoot the ball from the outside, which is, which is tough in girls basketball. You know, so they're a really, really solid team. Coached well. Mike Amaya does a great job with them. Very disciplined, which is you know, having been a girls varsity basketball coach and a boys varsity basketball coach, you know, that is one of the tough things to do sometimes is to get a girls team that is disciplined. Um, and that's not a knock on them. It's just that it's personalities, it's, it's skill level. It's the way that you teach the fundamentals, uh, for a lot of teams, boys, you just can roll the ball out and let them go because they're just athletic and that doesn't make you a great coach, but sometimes a great coach can get those teams to be disciplined and fundamental and in my experience those teams are the ones that do the best uh down the stretch and so twins got it and jerome is scrappy they are athletic they are scrappy um and they are going to give some people some problems so that's going to be a great rematch down the stretch for sure. And really, this Great Basin Conference as a whole is shaping up to be pretty exciting. You've got Twin and Jerome, right? And Twin brings back, you know, Hallie Egbert and Riley Robbins. It's kind of the same as last year, right? It's um, almost all guards, right? They don't yeah. have much for size. They do have uh, Hallie Walker back, who is brings some height to the team, and they sorely missed her last year. Uh, but uh, they really are a perimeter-oriented team, and as if Twin didn't need any additional help, but they get it in a transfer from Canyon Ridge, the school across town, right? Ava Martin transfers from Canyon Ridge to Twin. She was an all-conference performer for the Riverhawks last year. So uh, Twin says, yeah, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, how about that? That that um, that little move caused a lot of uh, chaos down here. Um, and it's basically, you know, the perception of it. You know, it's, it, it's not... And I'm not going to I'm not going to label this one thing or another. Um, I will say that, you know, that whole thing happened because if, if you remember the, the whole Canyon Ridge volleyball story, right, that, that we talked about where, you know, the team walked out, some of them came back, whatever. But there were two girls that stuck around that didn't leave through that mess. And one of them was was Ava Martin and uh, got a lot of respect for her for sticking that out for whatever the situation was, because, you know, the game became more important than the drama. And, and you like to see that. And apparently after everything was over, it just became too messy and, and had to file for a hardship to transfer. And, you know, and her family and brothers, they, they live in the twin district. You know, it was Ava that chose to go to Canyon Ridge when, you know, she was a freshman and, and uh, played varsity sports there and, good athlete but i guess things just got too sour over there and toxic and and filed the hardship and it was granted and you know and i i want to say unprecedented that you're going to get an athlete that played volleyball at one school and in that same season is going to play basketball at another school in that same town and so it's interesting and it's met with mixed reviews but every situation is different And we'll hit on that a little bit later. Yeah, that'll tie in with our Scott's thoughts uh, very well. Now, Twin did play Canyon Ridge uh, last night. Yeah, last night, uh, 65-35 win for the Bruins there. Bruins are off to a 3-1 and start. Their only loss is to Class 5A Eagle, which is, by the way, a pretty good team, coached by a friend of the program, Jeremy Monroe. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, (laughs) uh, we, we opened our season with Eagle. And um, it was a what a, what an awesome experience that was because uh, Jeremy was at Jerome um, before he was an AD and VP. A matter of fact, he he's the guy I took over for. Um, but prior to him getting into administration, he was my JV coach when I was the varsity coach, and so we go way back. And 
And now he works at Eagle High School where my sister works and uh, as is vice principal there. And so one of the girls on his staff, Carrie Green, is a Jerome Tiger and played here. And so we kind of had a big old welcome home moment uh, and presented Carrie and Jeremy with some, you know, Jerome Tiger swag as they stood in their Eagle t-shirts and on the Eagle bench. And we had a blast with it and had a great time. But, uh, you know, for, for Twin and Jerome to open with Eagle, I mean, that's, that's what it's about. You, you, you schedule those hard games. That way you can just find out where your weaknesses are right away. You don't play patsies that you're going to beat by 40 to open a season and get this false sense of security, you know, and that's what we did at Jerome. We, we opened with Eagle and we went on the road to Bishop Kelly. And I mean, both those games, we were in it and had chances, but it really did tell us what we needed to work on. Yeah, and so it's, it sure looks like in the Great Basin Conference for girls hoops, there's kind of a big four at the top. There's Twin Falls and Jerome, obviously. Jerome just went to Mountain Home last night, Thursday night, and got a 56 to 48 win. So that's a what an eight point victory. So Mountain Home, we know is going to be tough. Brent Keener, really good coach there at Mount at Mountain Home, um, mm -hmm. and then you know Minico also. You know they've got CJ Lotta who can walk into the gym and and get 20 you know, without breaking a sweat. Uh, <laughs> she set, she set the new record uh, for most points in a state tournament last year uh, in the four, a ranks for Minico and, and the Spartans are off to a four and O start two and O in the league. And they have a non-conference victory over Pocatello, kind of one of the big favorites over in the East. So at the end of the day, Scott, there's going to be a really good team and possibly two really deserving teams that are not going to qualify for the state tournament. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. You know what? And we haven't seen this in the girls ranks for, a, for a minute, you know, this Minico team is anytime you got CJ Lada, it's like, you know, she makes everybody else around her better. I mean, she's a real deal. And they've got, like you said, wins uh, against Highland of Pocatello and Pocatello. And then, then the two of the, the weaker teams in our conference with Burley and Canyon Ridge at the moment, um, but man, they're, they're getting some attention because of, of those first two wins and, uh, they're going to play Pocatello again, uh, tomorrow. And that one's going to be in Pocatello. So we'll see what happens there, but boy, what a start for, for, uh, Minico. And then, you know, we already talked about twin mountain home is nobody to sleep on. That is a really well coached team. And, and Brent Keener is a really good friend of mine and, and just a great dude. And he does a great job in a tough place to coach. You know, ever since growing up, you know, here in Jerome, Mountain Home has always been that weird place because, you know, the Air Force base is there. People are in and out of it. Um, and it's just a really hard place to coach. It's a tough environment to play in when you go up and you've got that that old floor and you got the stage underneath the basket. And it's just like it's just a tough place to go. So anytime you can go up there and get a win, it's it's definitely a big one. And, and Mountain Home is somebody you're going to have to pay attention to because they shoot the three like it's nobody's business. They just crank those things up. And, and if they're falling that night, they can beat anybody. Yeah, good things happening over in Moho for sure. Um, so yeah, that's what we're keeping an eye on for girls basketball. Boys basketball, Scott, we talked about really the season gets going this week. A very small handful of teams started last weekend, which is like the earliest you could possibly start, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the first day you could start, with the minimum 10 practices was like Friday, I think. And nobody's going to play on Black Friday. Uh, so Saturday, we had a, just a couple of boys basketball games around the state and really around the region. And I say around the region because we had a very interesting neutral site boys basketball contest between Wendell and Kimberly. They decided to head south and play at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, home of the NBA's Utah Jazz. This was a really cool cool deal that went down yeah i mean man talk about the game became secondary in a way because of all of the glitz and glamour and we've all seen hoosiers right where they walk into that big gym at the end and everybody's starstruck and they have to take out the tape measure and and measure that you know how tall the rim is 10 feet well you'll find it same same size back in hickory and you know it, it's that kind of feel right um you know and so talking to you know the the people involved in this, it, it was just one of those awesome experiences. Now, Kimberly won a very tight ball game, 
uh, over Wendell. And, you know, talking to Kimberly, they're like, man, we were just so starstruck and awestruck that it took us a minute to get it together. And then also, you know, you, you, we talk about this at the state tournament sometimes, especially when we get out to the Idaho Center, that these gyms that these kids are so used to playing in, you know, they've got the solid walls around it. They got the, the, the right behind the backboards is solid stuff, right? You get into these open areas like the Idaho Center or the Delta Center, and you, you try to play in these venues, it takes, it takes a hot minute just to get your, your bearings and your, and your feel because you're shooting at open space. And, and that is tough to do if you've never done it before, you know? And so they, they had to adjust to that and, and, you know, ask them one of the other things that was tough about it. And they go, we had a hard time, believe it or not, finding the scoreboard. It's so big that we, we had a hard time just not looking to the wall where we're used to seeing it and having to, to look around and try to find, oh, there it is, <laughs> or whatever. Um, but man, what, a, what an awesome experience it was for these kids. Yeah. So the way this all got set up was kind of through Wendell. So I always, I always like to joke, uh, AJ Kelsey, who is in his seventh year as the head coach at Wendell. I can't believe it's been that long. He's really come in and, and turned that program around. He's done a fantastic job. Um, but I always laugh because his coaching staff, it's like a college coaching staff. You know, he's got like six assistant coaches that are on the bench guys that are all willing to help out and, and coach the team. Um, and sometimes they have more coaches than players, it seems like. Uh, but one of one of those assistant coaches, Scott, is Jordan Lancaster. And the connection comes not through Jordan, but through Jason nice. Lancaster, mm -hmm. who coaches uh, girls golf at Wendell and previously was the girls basketball coach at Gooding. And so he's kind of got the, the in there at the Delta Center and, and with the Utah Jazz. And so they did this actually in 2019 as well, Scott. Uh, Wendell went down there and played carry and they got a 59 to 52 win, but it had been a while since they had done it. And so they got it set up and facilitated. And I guess the only other part to it was picking an opponent to play. And so they call Kimberly and Kimberly says, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and they treated the whole thing just like it was a high school game where they brought their, their scorers, their score people, the, the table help. Fans are sitting courtside at the Delta Center watching their teams play in this just awesome venue. And, um, you know, and they sent us some pictures of the event uh, that were really cool. And I think you've got uh, some of those. Um, and, I mean, just something to talk about that these kids are going to remember. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, so this was so that so they played on Saturday during the day and then the Utah Jazz played. I think it was that night. They got mm -hmm. to hang around and play or, or watch the, the Utah Jazz game that night. And so during the Jazz game, they threw this up on the Jumbotron, Scott. Um, and you can see it there. Everybody in the arena got to see it. Um, and, and there were some club teams that were there as well. But there you see at the bottom, Wendell High School and Kimberly High School. And so if you're listening to this audio only at IdahoSports.com um, or wherever you download your podcasts, I would definitely recommend you check out the video version this week at the IdahoSports.com YouTube channel or Facebook page because we've got some really cool pictures here. And so you're seeing it right here on the Jumbotron at the Delta Center, that recognition. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's that's a really cool deal. And then we also have a picture here from Kimberly. This is the team photo they lined up and took on the floor at the Delta Center. And then here's the big photo with uh, with Wendell and Kimberly mm -hmm. all in there together. What a moment. What a, what a lifetime of memories. And you could see the fans um, yeah. behind them as well. It is kind of reminiscent of the Idaho Center, kind of in those when the smaller schools are playing, right. They don't quite fill it up, but they're, they're all kind of in close to the action and it does get pretty loud. So what a cool experience. Oh, no, no question about it. And then just know that it, it's, it's funny when you look at the size of things too, because you know, these, these kids are obviously not as big as the NBA players, but they're playing on the same floor, you know? And so you, you look at the space that these kids take up on a playing surface and then you watch the NBA players take that same surface and the whole world shrinks. I mean, it just gives you that kind of perspective. And that's, and that's one of the cool things I like about it. And I know these kids are, you know, seeing the same thing and like, holy 
cow, this is where all these NBA players, they dunked on this rim right here and whatever. And man, they're not going to forget this. Yeah, what a cool moment there. And you'll see also in the background, the final score, Scott, Kimberly did get the win 63 to 58. So not only was it a cool experience, really good game too. Yeah, yeah, it was. So that, that wow, that, very cool. If you ever get the opportunity to say yes to something like this, then absolutely do it. Those kids will remember that forever. Yeah, and both of those teams, Kimberly at the 3A level, Declo, or excuse me, Wendell at the 2A level, will be fighting to get to state this year. And, and I think both teams have a really good chance of getting there. So this isn't the last time that we'll uh, we'll hear from uh, Wendell and Kimberly in boys hoops this year, uh, to be sure. So Yeah, absolutely. And now that we're getting started with hoops, uh, both t- seasons are underway. Guys and girls, this is going to be this is going to be busy now. Yep, for sure. So, uh, congrats to Wendell and Kimberly on what is a really cool uh, experience there. So, Scott, part of the experience every week here on the Magic Valley Prep Cast, at least for the last couple of months, has been uh, this segment that we've uh, debuted called Scott's Thoughts. You know, we started this a couple of months ago, just trying to like add a little extra segment to the prep cast. And that, and that's the thing we have prep casts in every region of the state, North Idaho, treasure Valley, magic Valley, East Idaho. And no, no two are the same. Each one has its own unique wrinkles based upon the personalities that are on the show. And so one way the magic Valley prep cast stands out from the others is we're able to tap into your experience as an educator, as a teacher, as a parent, as an administrator, as a coach, you just, you have that diverse background that not a lot of Idaho sports.com uh, people have. And so it's been a real pleasure every week to, to, to tap into Scott's thoughts. We've covered, I think 11 different topics ranging from the language that you use. That was the most recent one, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We've talked about, uh, you know, how do you avoid over committing yourself? Um, one of the very first ones we did, Scott, was uh, learning how to uh, learn from a loss. That was the very first one we did. And then the mm-hmm. second one that we ever did was talking about finding the motivation to do the things that we don't want to do. And right. that really resonated with me personally. And I always try to bring up the topics based upon something that I've seen in in my own life. Um, but we're really starting to get some feedback from people in the Magic Valley and around the state as well. And we got a really cool email from uh, Jess Montgomery, girls basketball coach at Buell. Um, and she took one of your Scott's thoughts about, you know, doing the things we don't want to do. And she she taught it. She turned it into a, a teaching moment for her team. Yeah, very, very cool. It was you know, I, I got to school or got to my office and I, you know, opened the email and there's, you know, a message from her and. And, uh, I mean, it was just like one of those things, it's like, yeah, it just makes your day, you know, it's, you know, that you put a lot of time and effort into, to doing this and you know, you never know how these things are going to get received. We didn't know going in, but, but I, I will tell you this, we're very lucky to have the platform that we do. Um, and, and really blessed to have the, the response that we've had statewide, you know, through these things. Um, you know, it was just when I was calling the, the Kendrick Hagerman game, you know, the Kendrick coaches way up north. I mean, they came down and made sure they mentioned that, hey, great job on those. We're, we enjoy listening to them all the time. And uh, you, you just getting that from from everywhere. And then to get, you know, something like, you know, what Jessica sent us, uh, that she played it for her team. And then they use that as a teaching tool to piece together the things that they were going to do uh, that maybe they didn't want to do, but they knew that needed to get done in order for this program and this team to be successful, man, that's just, I mean, that just, it hits you into feelers is what it does. Yeah. So here I'll read the email that Jess sent into us. And, and by the way, Je- you know, Jessica Montgomery, formerly Jessica twos. And, and so that name will resonate because she was quite the player at Filer, mm-hmm. not that, not that long ago. And now she's, uh, breaking into the coaching ranks uh, at a district rival, Buell. Yeah. But I've been, I've been really impressed with what she's been able to do in a short amount of time. Uh, so here's what she sent in. Uh, one of my coaches sent me uh, the YouTube video doing the things we don't want to do, and I loved it. We had a team dinner last night, and I played this for our players to listen to. Afterwards, we had the girls take a piece of our team success puzzle and write three things on the back in three areas 
personal school and basketball that they could give to the team. So something from their personal life they could give to the team, something from school they could give to the team, something basketball related they could give to the team. Things that they really might not want to do, but they knew would push them toward personal and team success. Then they put together the pieces and we hung it up in our locker room. And then she said, thank you for what you do for the sport of basketball in our Valley. Really appreciate the message and the lessons we learned from your words. And then she even sent us in a picture, Scott, of the finished puzzle that was put together. So here it is. Here's here's the Buell girls basketball team after the team dinner. And you can see it. They're holding that puzzle right there. And all of the what they're contributing is on the back side of that. But th that's a really cool idea. I would have never thought to do that. Yeah, no, that is a super cool idea. And, you know, and, and Jess has been around the game a long time. She understands uh, what it takes and the, the, the team effort. There is, there's no one person bigger than the team. And, and if anybody understands it, it's her. And she's going to do great things uh, with this Buell program. But that is a very cool idea. Yeah. So uh, thank you for sending that in, Coach Montgomery. And again, if you are a coach, if you're a player, if you're a parent, if you're an administrator out there and you've got a story like that, send it in to us because that's what this that's what this show is all about. We want to yeah. shine the spotlight on these incredible young men and women in our communities that are doing amazing things. So you can always send in, you know, stories. Uh, that you don't think are getting enough attention, uh, pictures, videos, etc. You can send that into Brandon at IdahoSports.com, and we would love to talk about what's going on in your community. So, mm -hmm. uh, yep, yep. Yeah. And I'm going to try to get a lot more uh, video and and picture content that we can start showing on on this, just to to mix it up. Because you know, you can go to IdahoSports.com and check out scores and and those kind of things. We want the stuff that you don't get. Yep, for sure. So uh, let's transition into this week's Scott's Thoughts topic. Scott, you've had two weeks to work on it. So, <laughs> well, I'm really, <laughs> I don't know. That might have been way too much time um, because it's just you keep coming back to the same thing. And, and uh, in this one, I'll let you kind of introduce the topic a little bit um, first. Yeah. So we, we talked about, two weeks ago, the start of the girls basketball season. And I had noted as I was putting together our statewide previews, there were a lot of players <clears throat> that were at one school previously and had transferred to another school. There were obviously some in the magic Valley. We talked about one earlier on this show, but there, but this was a statewide thing. We're not singling mm -hmm. out any one person, any one school. This is something I have noticed in every single district 5A all the way down to 1A D2. Uh, 1A D2, for example, a six foot one center from Council, who was uh, the MVP of the state tournament last year, she transferred to Tri Valley, a district rival. Uh, so this is happening in all corners of the state at all levels. And the question is, and and the question that came into my mind was, okay, we always hear the expression, the grass is always greener on the other side. But what causes us to pursue that? Because we know that. You're you're leaving something you know and stepping into something that is unknown. The grass yeah. could really be greener on the other side. It it could be brown. <laughs> there could be no grass. <laughs> or, it could be or, like my backyard. It's just yeah, dirt. Or it's greener because it's artificial turf, right? Right. You know, it's you know, when I, when I was thinking about this topic, it was just like I, I I tried to apply it to just kind of in general why we're always jumping ship on things and and abandoning stuff and then. And then in the end, tried to tie it to uh, the athlete. So it's more of a general broad brush of why we do this, um, I think. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And that that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be because this happens in our in our as we go go into our adult lives as well, right? Mm -hmm. Some people just can't hold the job for more than six months or a year, and then they're off pursuing the next thing. We have people that go to college and they get a degree in. Uh, four different subjects and they next thing you know they've been in college for 15 years and it's like okay what <laughs> career are you actually choosing here so it's yeah. not it's not just a high school athlete thing it's something that afflicts us as adults as well so scott the question for this week scott's thoughts is is the grass really greener on the other side and why do we choose to pursue it greek poet ovid first said the harvest is always richer in another man's field even as far back as first century BC, man has always been wired to covet. 
to chase, to not be satisfied. And thus, the grass is always greener. It's about envy and perception. It's about fantasy and fear. It's about wanting what you don't have and not appreciating what you do. And this affliction is real, and it affects nearly every aspect of our lives, from jobs to relationships to even our student-athletes. But why does this happen? Why has it become part of our social DNA, and, and how is it affecting the way that our kids see the world? Well, it's definitely an interesting subject that runs a lot deeper than most realize. You know, and I talk a lot about how a changing society helps facilitate a lot of these problems, and this one, it's no different. We live in a world that's constantly trapped in the honeymoon phase. No matter where we live or what we do, we always have one foot out the door and commit to almost nothing. We have learned to leave ourselves so many outs that when things get tough, fight or flight, well, that becomes just flight. You know, there's so much to unpack with this topic, and there's no way I'll get into all of it, but hopefully I can give you enough to think about. So let's start with the fantasy. The fantasy that everyone's life is better than ours. You know, deep down, we know that not to be true, yet we chase it anyway. With the continued technological advancements and the destructive arm of social media, our minds are never quiet. We forget to focus on the present, or, or focus at all for that matter, and appreciate what's right in front of us. It's a byproduct of a fast-paced world where everyone is trying to get ahead, to have the next best product when it hits the market, the next best car, the next best job, the next best clothes, the next best spouse. You know, we're so programmed in this honeymoon phase to want everything new that Whatever it is that we have, the shine wears off quickly, and we are addicted to that shine. I mean, just look at the way things have changed over the years. Back in the day, companies made products that lasted. My parents had an oven that lasted 50 years. Back then, people gave their word, and they meant it. A handshake carried some weight, and things, things had depth. Things lasted. Now, we are paper thin emotional rather than logical. We're, we react but don't think. We jump but don't look. And we are driven by a fantasy and not reality. We are now conditioned to believe that nothing lasts and everything and everyone is replaceable. And it's this type of mentality that sometimes propels us away from stability because stability is boring. Stability is stagnant. And instead of growing within what we have, to recreate and liven things up because we're bored within what we have, we bail because contentment is a lost virtue. And when you are discontent, you always want more and more and more, and your desire can never be satisfied. But when you practice contentment, you can say to yourself, I already have everything that I really need. Be happy with what you have and who you are, and be generous with both, and you won't have to hunt for happiness. You know, most of the time when we jump ship on something, it's because working through things isn't an option anymore. We see struggle and adversity as something to avoid, not something to help us grow. We see patience as a waste of time, and we see compromise as a deal we're not willing to make. You know, another layer to this and largely thanks to technology, today we have choices, and sometimes too many. And you'd think that with the world at our fingertips, we'd all find something and be happy. Not so much. You see, the problem with too many choices is that we become restless. We become paralyzed with too much and can't make any decisions. Think about it like this. Ask a child what they want for dinner, but offer no suggestions and see how quickly they can make a decision. They often can't because there's too many options. But ask a child what they want for dinner and give them three things to choose from. And then notice how much more productive that is. However, I will say that choosing what and where to eat sometimes doesn't get any easier as an adult. So in this fast-paced world with too many options, we tend to suffer from choice overload. 
and too much choice kills the choice. For athletes, it's the exact same thing. They see a sports world that's littered with athletes jumping ship, chasing a better situation, a bigger contract, more spotlight. There's no loyalty there either. Just look at the NBA. Look at the transfer portal. And the exposure to this madness, it does affect our kids and what they perceive as normal. It tends to prioritize short-term results over long-term development. And so many times, all of it is driven by the parents who say, the coach is no good. They yell at my kid. My kid doesn't get enough playing time. And because our kids don't have enough life experience, these toxic thoughts now become the toxic thoughts of our children. Instead of encouraging them to advocate for themselves or work harder or even have a conversation about goal setting, we strip them of all responsibility for their decisions and severely damage any coping mechanisms they might have to overcome adversity. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes making that switch is the best thing for an athlete. They leave a bad situation and they thrive. Every circumstance is different. But sometimes, sometimes they're wrong. They changed the situation, but they didn't change themselves. And will that change of environment change the attitude and the effort? For it's our actions, not our surroundings, that give us meaning. And hopefully, before they decide to leave a team or a school or adults leave a job or a marriage, they reflect and have an honest moment with themselves and ask themselves, did they do everything possible to make things better before they started blaming everyone else? So what's the answer? Well, for one, clear the clutter. Focus on the present and be grateful for what you have and where you are. Eliminate choices. For our kids, man, they are completely overwhelmed in this world to the point of mental breakdowns, overall shutdowns, anxiety, depression. And when we see the lack of guidance they have as they blindly try to make their way through this mess, it isn't hard to figure out why so many spiral out of control. Too many choices, too many distractions, too much clutter. All of this without direction. You see, having goals, values, and guidance can help eliminate the clutter and keep you grounded, help simplify, and keep you on your side of the fence and not chasing the fantasy. For while you were busy looking at someone else's grass, there was someone else looking at yours. The foolish seek happiness in the distance. The wise man grows it under his feet. Out of calmness comes clarity. And out of clarity comes appreciation. Strive to be better, but stay grounded. Be careful of leaving something you need for something you want. And lastly, we all want to be happy. We all want situations that provide that for us. But too many of us are locked into the idea that we need complete overhaul to make that happen. And until you give up the idea that happiness is somewhere else, it will never be where you are. And those are Scott's thoughts. Impactful. That was really good. I liked that. <laughs> Life lessons, man. That's just kind of what it's all about, you know? And sometimes I need to remind myself a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, you know, I was thinking of all the different ways it relates to us in our adult lives, chasing jobs. But when you said, you know, the next, the next, uh, marriage, I was mm -hmm. like, wow, that I, it's something I wouldn't have thought of, but it's so true. And yeah. unfortunately there are people that just uh, the committed relationship or whatever it's, I don't know. They're always chasing yeah. the next thing. Wow. Uh, options, uh, options always have to be open for some reason. And it's just not, a. Uh, uh, a loyalty driven place anymore to fight through stuff, you know, and that's at all levels up and down. Yeah, for sure. So that was a great Scott's thoughts. 
two week two week Scott's thoughts is pretty good, but we'll get we'll get back to one week Scott's okay. thoughts. Okay, all right. Yeah, we're, we're normalizing now. We're normalizing, so I can handle the next week. Yeah, our regularly scheduled programming will resume here. Um, honestly, we just talked about you know the language that we use, right? Mm-hmm. And cuss words and people in the stands, and I hate to circle back to that topic, but. Oh my gosh, Scott, I was doing the East Idaho prep cast earlier this week with Sean Kane, our East Idaho guy, and he's the the PA announcer at Century High School, and he's done probably, I don't know, five basketball games so far this year, and he like already, he's like, I've got to start the show with a rant. People in the stands, shut up. Leave the referees alone. (laughs) Like, Like, we're not even five games into the season, and he's already having to say, like, there was a team that Century was playing earlier this season they had one fan who is kind of braggadocious and kind of used to be in the big the big guy in the room you know one of those people scott and he was like he knows the referees personally and was calling them by name and yeah come on joe what kind of call is that and so i we could go the topic of like you know fan behavior towards referees but we can Unfortunately, we can always circle back to that one later because it just seems like behavior never changes. What I wanted to explore, Scott, is how do you how do you check that ego and check that confidence to be, you know, because there are alphas in this world, right? And it's hard to sometimes recognize that, hey, in this particular situation, alpha attitude isn't needed. I need to scale it back and and not be the loud voice in the room, not be the dominant personality. When you're in the stands at a basketball game, certainly you should not be the dominant personality in the gym. That should be the players and the coaches. Um, So I guess that's my Scott's thoughts for the upcoming week is when you're an alpha, when you're used to being the big braggadocious person, how, how do you recognize that that's not needed and scale it back? Well, that's a good one too, because, you know, I, I watched the, uh, yesterday I watched Sean do that and talk about that. And, and, um, and and I'm not any different. I see it too. In fact, yesterday I was, um, scrolling through something and one of a friend of mine had a live, uh, feed up of a basketball game of a kid's basketball game. I think they were, I don't know, maybe sixth graders, you know, and as, as you kind of scroll through that, I, I stopped and okay, check it out for a minute and I had the sound on. And all I'm hearing through this live feed of like this small kids, girls basketball game where people screaming at the officials and the officials are not really officials. They're volunteers there to help out, you know, Um, and and you would think that coming out of COVID where we had no fans in the gym, that they were banned for some time that when they came back, they'd be a little bit more appreciative of being able to watch their kids play. But I'll be danged if we did not go the opposite direction for some weird reason. Um, All of a sudden, everybody is an expert and everybody wants to flex their muscle to show that they know what's going on. And I mean, you're seeing that all over the place. You're seeing it in sports. You're seeing it in in society where everybody is just kind of getting their feathers all ruffled up, chest bumped up that, you know, it's, it's this, everybody is just willing to throw down verbally. um, And we're seeing it physically in look at the stands in pro sports games. I mean, how many times can you, you know, talk about a game without a fight breaking out somewhere? I mean, what in the world is going on with our fans? Uh, and 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 I, it's a it's an epidemic that I think is all over the place, not just high school, but but it's everywhere. And and I'm interested to explore a little bit on on what I think is is happening. Yeah, because it applies to I mean, certainly it applies to games, but I've been so many times, Scott, in social situations and there's that one person. Right. I, I say that one guy, but it can be ladies, too, mm-hmm. that just has to be the dominant personality in the room and you can't read the room like hey what you're throwing out people aren't picking up all right <laughs> and yeah. you just they can't read the room i i just yeah I, no they just don't i mean we we all have our filters are broken when it comes to our mouths and our patience is thin 
and we are reactionary. And so when you combine all of those ingredients, you are going to have a powder keg that's ready to explode. And that's what we're seeing. Yeah. So that'll be next week. Scott's thoughts is how yeah. do we, how do we not be that dominant personality? It, that's and sometimes that's needed, right? If yeah. you're a good yeah. leader, there's absolutely times where you've got to be that alpha person. And, but there's also times where okay, it's not needed and you got to be able to, you can't just hammer everything. You've got to have other tools in the toolbox, right? <laughs> Absolutely right. Absolutely. So I'll get yeah. to work on that one. Okay. That sounds good. And in the meantime, we will be back to break down more exciting Magic Valley stories. Again, if you've got an idea or something you want us to talk about, send it in to Brandon at IdahoSports.com or Scott at IdahoSports.com as well. You can send it to Scott also. And uh, we would love to talk about what's going on in your town. But until then, enjoy the competition, everybody. For Scott Burton, I'm Brandon Bainey, and we will see you next time on IdahoSports.com.